future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to season two of Art Starts Explores Our Province at Play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. And um, I'm really very happy to be with you today as we are moving into our season two um, of this program. So during the summertime, what we did was we prototyped or we tried out what um, what it would be like to move our family public programming that we usually host in our gallery online. And during the summer, we took a whole bunch of notes. And now during the fall season, we're ready to go with season two and share all the things that we learned. The big thing that's going to change um, in season two is that during the summertime, we had a bi-weekly theme. That means once every two weeks, we came up with a new theme. And during the fall, what we're going to do is we're going to do one theme a month, which means that you're going to get three, uh, three workshops um, on the theme with me. And then you'll have, um, we'll have a performer, one of our Art Starts on Saturdays, touring artists that will perform um, at the end of the month all on a theme. So this month is a little special because October has uh, five weeks rather than four. So what we're going to do is here, I'm going to make this a little darker because I know the, the contrast is a little bit easier to see when it's darker. So October 3, 10, and 17th, we are going to explore textures together, which is going to be great. And then on October 24th, we are going to have a Halloween special. So again with me, but we're going to uh, explore Halloween and probably we're still going to be looking at textures, but all on the theme of Halloween. And then on October 31st, that's when we will have um, our Art Starts on Saturday performer that we will have a free performance that you'll, uh, you'll get to check out online. So um, you'll also, you might also notice that what we're doing now is that all of our, our um, Explorers workshops are pre-recorded with me. And so that's so you can see everything that I'm doing here as I guide you through this workshop. And then we're going to continue to host something every Saturday at 11 a.m. All, all free for our family programming, um, but through a watch party, which means that I can comment along with you, um, share things and make again, I can follow the workshop and I can make more things and add more things as we're following the workshop together. So there's always something to do at 11 a.m. on Saturdays at uh, Art Starts explores um, on our Facebook page. So I hope to see you every Saturday at 11 a.m. If you joined us at all last season, or if you've ever been a part of our Art Starts Explorers programming, you know that we have three rules for Explorers. And I always like to make sure that I cover those before we get started. Oh, you know what? I'm also going to take this down because it is 11 o'clock and we got started. So Okay, so the three rules of explorers that I always like to go over is, um, is something that we are going to practice. So we're not always perfect at it, but it's kind of what helps guide us as we go along and uh, we practice together. So the first one is respect. We practice respect by checking in with ourselves, seeing if we had a good night's sleep, checking in with each other. Maybe somebody woke up a little bit grumpy today. Maybe they didn't have such a great morning. Maybe they ran out of their favorite cereal. Maybe they didn't have any breakfast this morning. And so now it's your chance to ask how everybody's feeling. We practice respect by respecting our tools. So maybe we're gonna use our tools today and they get a little bit messy. Or um, somebody else is waiting to borrow the tool that we are using. And so we can use our words or our sign or write it down and ask each other, um, how long are you going to use your scissors so that we can all be sharing our tools together? And if we use them in um, kind of a funny way or they get dirty, we clean them up. And then of course we always put them away again when we're all finished. We also practice respect by acknowledging the land and its people. And so what you're seeing here is my studio, and my studio is on Coast Salish territory. And so I am a guest on the, tra uh, the traditional ancestral lands of the uh, Tsleil-Waututh, Skohomish, and Musqueam people. And so I'm trying to be the best guest I can possibly be while I am working and playing and bringing this workshop to you today. Take a moment to think about where you're coming from. 
And who are the people who are the stewards of your lands and bodies of water? The second thing is that nothing is for keeps. So everything that we're going to be making today, we're going to put back, or we're going to throw away, or we're going to rip up, or we're going to, we're, we're just going to get rid of. We're not sticking it on the fridge. We're just trying things out. And that's really great because it means we can take things from the recycling bin. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's not for keeps. And so taking things that might have writing on it or from a sketchbook that you already colored on, um, that, that gives you a lot of freedom because you can just use whatever materials. The recycling, the recycling bin becomes your art shop. Um, and I said, we're going to take everything apart when we're all finished. And so the nice thing about practicing that nothing is for keeps is that it allows us to not have any expectations. It means that all ideas are good. It means that nothing has to turn out perfectly. So if you have an idea in your head of how you want something to turn out, try today to kind of throw that out and um, just practice Practice surprise. If you know what's going to happen when you do a thing, then you're not really exploring. You're not really learning. You already know the path. Pretend like we're taking an exploration through a creativity cave. And so we don't know what's around the corner. And so we, we, we want to practice surprise. And those are the three rules of explorers. I'm going to put them over to the side because they are going to stay with us, but we want to have a little bit more space to be working. That's me. I'm, I'm the hands and the voice that you are seeing and hearing. And then I'm going to move our sandwich board off to the side and my little mini host over here so we've got more room. All right, let's explore textures together. Okay, so what is a texture? A texture is a feeling or appearance of a surface. Um, it could also be the consistency of a surface. So what I mean by that is... Um, it, or sorry, a consistency of a substance. So for example, if you were to look at this, I, I have this napkin here, but you can find anything. Uh, wherever you are watching us today, um, maybe you're watching outside and you can find a leaf or you're beside some water or you're in a classroom or you're with a friend today. Um, you can find any object, any object you can find, really, honestly, anything, and just take a look at it and compare it to something else, right? What does it look like before you even touch it? Does it look like it's going to be smooth? Does it look like it's going to be rough? Does it have bumps on it? What do you think it's going to feel like when you touch it? For something like liquid, which is a substance, right? Um, we look at it and we might know that we might know that it's wet and we might know that it's liquid, but what is it going to feel like when it's on our fingers? Right? And so we might assume that this is going to just be be wet, but if you stick your finger in your own, right? Your own cup of juice, you don't want to stick your finger in somebody else's juice. But stick your finger in a cup of juice or stick your finger in a cup of water and is it different? Does it have a different texture? Does it feel different on your fingers? And does it look different? When you look at it, is it clear or does it have chunks in it? Does it have materials in it? Does it have bubbles in it? And so that's the consistency of the substance. And so when we're talking about texture today, it's the look and the feel. So feeling or appearance of a surface, something that you can touch. And it's a really fun activity that you could do with your friends is that you could go and you could play um, I Spy but instead of I spy, you could play I touch. And so you go around the house and you find an object um, and maybe you touch it, but they can't see. Maybe they're closing their eyes or they're turned away. And then you say, I spy or I touch uh, with my fingers something that is bumpy. And then they can go and they can go look for it. If you have somebody who has low vision or you want to just try it out without using your eyes, you could also... Uh, go and find a whole bunch of different things and put them in on the table in front of you. So your friend sits on one side and, and you sit on the other or an adult or whoever you're making with today. And you grab a bunch of different things and you put them on the table in front of you. And then you close your eyes and you try to guess what the object are, what the objects are in front of you just by touching them, Right. And you'll get all of these clues that sometimes you, you don't know you're noticing when you close your eyes that 
a lot of people who only use their hands to see or experience the world, right? They don't have those visual cues. They don't see those things and get that visual information, but they're very tuned in to um, things that maybe you ignore or you take for granted when you're using your eyes all the time. So the sense of practicing the sense of touch and exploring textures can be a really fun and rewarding thing. So that's one game you can play. You can go and play um, eye touch. I actually really like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down on a sticky today, just so that we're taking notes as we go along. So you could play eye touch, <laughs> which is kind of like eye spy for fingers. There you go. Cool. So that's one of the first things that we, we kind of explored today of something that you could do is go and play that game. Uh, we're going to play a version, but you can see all the things that I'm going to do. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to warm up our brains by touching a whole bunch of things. And of course, we want to make sure that we have permission to touch the things that we're touching. And especially in this time where we're all practicing um, safety and wellness, we want to make sure that we wash our hands before we touch things. And then, of course, we wash our hands after we touch things um, and we try not to touch our face or mouth while we're, we're playing this game. Okay, so I found a pair of scissors. I found a pencil. I had this paper towel here. What else do I have on my artboard right here? And you can go looking for things um, to be exploring along with me at the same time. But the things that you find are obviously going to be very different from the things that I found. So I have like this cupcake or muffin tin here. And I have a crumpled piece of paper. I feel good about this. I feel like I've got a couple of different um, textures all sitting here now. Okay. So if we're playing a game of eye touch and we're just trying to come up with some descriptions, right? This is a good way of practicing, right? Using our words is another way of being creative, of practicing creativity. It's one thing to, to always be drawing or making or gluing, but it can be fun to challenge yourself and your friends to come up as, with as many words as to describe a thing, because then when you ever want to start writing, or even if you do want to start drawing or making a thing, you've got more ways that you have experienced it other than just your eyes. Okay, so I've been touching this napkin a lot this morning. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to use the word soft and view of a paper towel as well, right? And you'll also notice that I like to turn it around and I like to look at it. And that's part of deep looking is that sometimes we make assumptions when we, or assumptions. So um, we think a thing before we do it. And remember how I was talking about no expectations? It can be kind of lazy when we just use our eyes and we assume that something's going to be a way. And it can be really fun and surprising when you pick something up, you turn it over and you notice things. I didn't know that, and you might not be able to see because of my camera, but the way that the, the pattern of dots, the the embossing, the, the, the little bumps on my page, or sorry, on my, my napkin that picks up liquid, it's got it's got a pattern to it. And I can't really see it when I look like this, and you might not be able to see it at all, but when I turn it this way and then I move the shadows, I can actually see um, like a flower in the pattern here. And I wouldn't have known that until I picked it up and actually touched it and moved it and turned it around. And so when we're doing deep looking and we're learning how to actually look at things and notice things, the more ways that we can experience a thing gives us more information. So I said soft and I said bumpy. I use the word emboss. I might even be able to use the word rough, right? So it's not smooth. It's rough. It's soft, but it's rough because it's got all this texture on it. It's got all these bumps. So this one, same thing. I feel like this one's probably going to be very similar because it looks kind of lightweight. It's got some texture around the outside of it. I've held one of them before, so I assume that. But then when I pick it up, it's bumpy, right? It's got all these um, these folds in the cup, right? So usually it would be sitting up like this and then there'd be the tasty treat inside of it. But I've pushed it out kind of flat because I wanted to see. And so if I run my fingers along it this way, it's got a different feel to it, even though it's still kind of bumpy versus feeling it this way. In fact, this way feels soft because the edges don't come into a peak, right? They come into... They come into a point when it's this way. And so when I'm touching it this way, 
it has a different texture of the lines versus this way. And I wouldn't know that until I picked it up. I guess I could say this is soft, but I don't feel like this is soft like the napkin. I feel like this one's more smooth. Are you touching different things as well? What do you notice about the thing that's in your hand? Can you describe it? What does it feel like to hold in one hand versus two hands? What does it feel like to hold in your palm versus using your fingers? What if you use other parts of your body to experience the texture of a thing? What do you notice? Maybe different parts of your body feel the textures differently. Oh, that, that really tickles. So when I'm running my the sh kind of more sharp edge, I mean, not sharp that it's gonna cut me, but definitely the, the outside edge of a paper is sharper than the inside edge of a paper. And so feeling that along the inside of my arm, ooh, is kind of ticklish. I don't, I don't think I really like it, but I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't tried it while I was safe and practicing this art right now um, and trusted myself to, to stop when I didn't like it, right? I tried the thing, I wasn't a fan of it, but now, now I know. So I can put that over to the side. All right, if you watched our theme video this week and you can find that on uh, YouTube or um, on our Facebook videos or on our website at artstarts.com slash explores online, I did some exploration with a pencil in our theme video. And what I liked about uh, the pencil is that it's actually got five different textures or five different materials that I can check out here, right? So it's got the, the lead or the, sorry, it's got the graphite at the end, the mark making at the end. It's got the wood. It's got more wood, but it's the coated wood. It's got the metal bands down here, and then it has an eraser. I'm not going to go into this, uh, the pencil too much because you can watch that video. But I really like to find things when I'm exploring texture that have multiple surfaces to them. So for example, my scissors. And I have these, uh, these non-stick safety scissors and they, they have a case. And unfortunately, I don't know where they went. I think they're probably in my, my scissor drawer. Um, but that's okay because it's nice, it's nice that these are quite blunt. So if you're trying or you're checking out a pair of scissors, if they have a sharp edge, I suggest you keep your fingers away from them, um, but you could name it. You could name that that's got a sharp, right? That's a sharp edge and I'm not gonna touch it, right? And I, I definitely recommend that you don't touch it, but if you were to open up the scissors, right? I know that those edges there are sharp because I've watched them cut before. But if you've never cut something before, maybe you don't know. So you could go and cut it. And you might actually find out that your scissors are dull. Maybe it's really hard to cut through um, the paper and they don't cut very well. And so using your eyes, you make the assumption that it's sharp because they're scissors. And it's not till you do the thing that you find out that it's not actually sharp. What else? Well, the top of my scissors, and your scissors um, are probably different, not only just the color of them, but my handles are made of rubber and so that it doesn't slip around when I'm using them. These are also cool scissors because they can be used with both hands. They don't have, some, some scissors have um, some uh, indentations, some places where your fingers can't go both ways. So I like these scissors because you can use them um, with both hands, which is really, which is really handy, <laughs> which is really great. Um, but this texture up here, the no slip part, while it's still smooth, it, it catches my, my hands. It's rubbery. It's kind of flexible, not really, but it has more flexible th flexibility than the metal. And while I wouldn't really say that this is warm or cold, when I use my hands, my, my, my body heat kind of transfers over to it, but the metal at the bottom, it's definitely cold and, and very smooth, except when I'm touching my letters, right? So I really like to pick up things when I'm exploring texture that have multiple surfaces so that I can check out the difference in the one object. Okay, so then I've got this crumpled piece of paper. If you've ever made art with me in the past, you know I love to crumple and rip paper. And so I, I can make an assumption again that I think that maybe this paper is going to be soft because I've already touched this soft paper and I touched the soft napkin. But when I pick it up, it's not, I mean, I guess it's soft right here. So if I touch small little places, 
ah, those are soft. But if somebody told me when I was holding this, this was soft, I'd be like, well, no, not really. It's kind of pointy. It's kind of sharp in places, right? It, every place where the, the paper is crinkled and there's a little point, there's kind of a sharp edge to it. I guess you could say it's lumpy. Yeah, I guess you could say it's lumpy. It's got lumps in places. It really is very interesting how soft it is in some places. So crumple up a piece of paper. What do you notice when you touch the crumply piece of paper? If you can hear the sound, this is probably the noisiest piece of texture that I have picked up, right? The scissors, you couldn't really hear me touching the scissors. I, could you hear, this is some sound when I hold on to the, uh, the muffin or the cupcake holder but I think this one is probably the loudest as I turn it around, right? So it's crinkles. Uh, so there, the paper is crinkled and the sound is kind of crinkled. And so it's kind of got a textured sound to it as well, right? So this paper has a textured sound. So this activity is really fun if you're starting to try and develop words on how to describe things, because it can be really useful if there were three pieces of paper across the room and I wanted my friend to pick up one. Knowing ways that you can describe a thing, can, you can go, can you pick up that paper, the crumpled page, and get it a little bit faster than if you went paper and they went which one and then they have to pick up each paper, right? So using those descriptive words and learning those descriptive words can be really helpful. Great, okay, so we've warmed up our brain and we've played a version of eye touch where we've touched a bunch of different objects and we've described them. Now that we've come up with some of these words, what are we going to do with them? Well, what, one of the things that I really like to do as a visual artist is to try and trace or transfer or collect textures. Because it can be really fun when practicing art making to have all of these, um, these tools in our tool bag to be able to draw or make things really quickly or with lots of um, interesting texture so that it's visually interesting. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find some paper and I have something called a graphite stick here, which is basically just a pencil without all of the outside of it. And you might not have one of these unless you are an artist or uh, you have access to some art materials, but it's basically just a messy pencil. So you could use a, um, a pencil instead that has a sh uh, that's been sharpened so that you've got some of the graphite there. If you've got some crayons, this is also a good thing to use. So I've got a bunch of crayons here. Most of my crayons still have their coats on them. They still have the paper on the outside. And one of the things, one of the techniques that I'm going to show you today is um, using a crayon without the coat on it. So if you are borrowing pen or borrowing crayons or um, they're your family's crayons or they're a classroom's crayons, ask an adult or ask the person who owns the crayons first before you start taking um, the paper jacket off of the crayon. So these are my crayons. So I feel okay taking the jacket um, the paper jacket off of mine, um, but we don't want to, right? We want to respect our tools. We want to respect the tools of other people. And so we are going to use our words or our signs and ask before we take, um, take the paper off. Okay. So just, whew, it's taking a little while. It's okay. Is it easier for you? If you're having a hard time, if you have permission to, to do it and you're having a hard time, you can ask somebody else to see if they can do it. What do you notice? So I, I'm gonna use the crayon as another way to describe, uh, to describe some texture. I can't pick up that piece of paper. There we go. Um, it's smooth, but it's also kind of sticky. The wax from the crayon feels, feels sticky, like it's left something behind on my fingers. And so smooth and sticky. Would you expect that from a crayon? I, I, don't, I think if I had just looked at the crayon, I might have said shiny, right? Because the light kind of shines on the crayon. But I don't know if I would have used the word sticky. So we really do. Uh, we want to use more than our eyes to uh, learn more about our materials. Okay, there we go. So I have undressed my, my crayon. It doesn't have its jacket anymore. 
And uh, so there's, there's a crayon. You can also use a pencil crayon, same as a pencil, uh, where you have a little bit more of the edge exposed. So we're, we're going to try not to use the tip, we're going to use the side of it. Um, and then if you have some scissors, you can, but um, I always like to say if you don't have scissors, that's okay, because we are going to, we, uh, we can always rip the page. And ripping paper can be real fun when we have permission. Okay, so when I talk about collecting texture, um, I'm talking about trying to find the shapes in, um, in visual texture. So what I'm doing is, is I'm looking at things and I'm going, all right, well, I see a bunch of lines here, right? Sure, I know that this is bumpy now, but I'm, I'm seeing lines here or maybe even long rectangles in the side of this, of this dish. So when we're, when we're looking, when we go hunting for textures, we want to see if we can find shapes in things. So I've grabbed a bunch of things off to the side here. And the first one that I have is my dirty running shoe. <laughs> you might have a really clean shoe, but this is my studio. And so whatever I have available um, is what I'm going to pull out and I'm going to play with. And so the... The interesting thing about this shoe is that I have all of these textures. I have this material over here that has all of these holes in them. And then on the bottom of the shoe, again, that's where it's dirty. And this is where we're going to definitely want to clean our hands afterwards. Check out all these lines, these squares, these rectangles that I have at the bottom of my shoe. And what's even cooler is, is that if you have access to a few different shoes, maybe you have a shoe and maybe uh, somebody else that you are making with today, whether you're over um, at somebody's house or whether you're in a classroom, I bet you anything people are going to have different textures on the bottom of their shoe. And when we're making art, what's really fun about that is to start tracing some of these textures. Oh, I hope the sound is still okay. Somebody has decided that they want to do some leaf blowing this morning and um, Hopefully that's not coming through in the recording. Oh, I think I used the last of my paper. Oh, that's okay. I've got some paper around here. So you take a look at some of this texture here. And I'm going to come over to the other side of my drawing table and grab some more paper. Thought I had more paper ready. That's okay. We're exploring together. That gives you a little bit more time to go and find some paper as well. Okay. So when I talk about tracing texture, I'm talking about how can we get this cool texture onto this piece of paper. And so I told you I had this graphite stick here. And so if you're using the crayon, you can use the crayon, or if you're using a pencil, I'll show you how to use each. What I like to do is I like to take the uh, my piece of paper, put it right up against the surface that I think the texture is on, and then rub my mark making tool to see if I can transfer the material or transfer the texture, oh yeah, this is cool, onto the piece of paper. And so without even having to, to draw it, I was able to get all of these cool rectangles here and all of these crisscross lines that would have taken me a really long time to draw, but I could trace it just by tracing the texture. Okay, let's do this again, but I'm going to do it with the crayon this time. I'm going to take this dirty shoe and put it down. There you go. And I'm going to try this, this shoe instead. Okay, so over here, I'm going to do the rectangles again. But if you have access to a shoe, the bottom of your shoe probably looks different. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like this one even better. Oh, cool, but I wouldn't know until I tried this out. And so this can be such a great fun activity to take a piece of paper and go around and see how many different textures you can find. And whether that's um, your home or your classroom or your community center or wherever you have access to a crayon or a pencil, um, you can go looking for different textures. I'm gonna grab one more shoe that I grabbed here because I was just talking about the bottom of the shoe, but I also have this huge flip-flop here. And what's great about this flip-flop is that there are so many textures on this, on this shoe. There's a texture at the top and so it's bumpy, but it has all of these like half moon, half, 
half circles on them. They kind of look like little smiles on the side of them. And then the bottom of the shoe here, where the foot goes, it's all of these diamond shapes. It's all of these little squares that have been turned to the side back and forth. And then on the bottom, it's got all of these triangles as well as these three circles. So I'm gonna see if I can get all of these textures just from this one shoe. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the little smiles. And I find it's easy to go kind of slow at the beginning to see um, what you can transfer over, but go fast, go slow. See what happens when you change the speed. I'm gonna see if I can get more of it over here. Yeah, oh, I really like this one. Check it out. That's awesome. Okay, and then the bottom of the shoe. Oh, neat. Oh, I really like this one too. I think I like all of them. I, I haven't found a texture I don't like yet. Okay, I'm gonna do more of the paper in this one. because I really like that texture. There we go. So I did a whole bunch of it right here. And then one more, and I've got another piece of paper over here. Oh, I kind of want a different color of crayon. So I'm going to see if I can undress another crayon. I'm going to do this one. All right, I'm going to do red violet. There we go. And remember, I have permission because these are my crayons. So um, taking the jackets off is okay, but we want to ask permission first. And you don't have to use the crayon. Oh, I said I was going to show you uh, using the pencil crayon or pencil. Okay, I'll do that next. I got really excited. And that's the fun thing about exploring art making, right, is that you get an idea and you want to try out all the different ways that you can do it. There isn't just one way to, um, to explore any one way of doing something. And all these ideas that we get as we make, if we, if we don't have any expectations or we don't really have any rules other than, re you know, respect and nothing is for keeps and no expectations, we can really learn and find and try out new things together. Okay. So first I'm going to do the circle. Oh, yep. I wasn't sure if it was going to turn up, but that's why I'm practicing surprise, right? So cool. So I've got a circle there, and then I'm just going to keep going. Oh, so what was interesting here is that some of the some of the triangles show up really well up here, which I like. But down here, it looks like the shoe is worn, so the tread at the bottom goes away. So I still have this texture, but the texture is more of the paper and the crayon rather than the shoe. And that's, that's interesting to, to figure out as well. Okay, so over here, there we go. There are, some, there are some defined triangles. What happens when you press hard or you go over the page multiple times? What happens when you go soft or slow? Check out all of these things as you go along. Okay, so I said I was gonna try one with our pencil crayon or pencil. So these, these were all of my shoe marks. But I also found, I found this plastic container and it's got all of these squares at the side. So that's what I was talking about when I was talking about shapes and visual texture, right? We're looking for shapes and things and that's how we know that it's going to have um, an interesting uh, texture to, to trace. So let's see, I'm going to bring this up here and I said I was going to do it with a pencil this time because you might not have a graphic stick or, um, or pencil. So for the pencil, I'm going to move my pencil over to the side, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to press down like I'm drawing a picture. I want to see if I can get the side of the pencil. There we go. And do you see where it's, where it's the hard plastic? The pencil's really catching that texture there. I also really like it because it's shading in. Here, I'm gonna move that off to the side. It's shading in all of my squares. So it's it could have just drawn the top of it. Like, do you see here, over here for the triangles? It's still the white paper over here. It didn't really get into the depressions in between. But when I was using my pencil, it actually colored in the boxes between the squares. So using a different tool is going to let us find different things. Okay, I'm going to do one more with our pencil crayon. And so I was able to find, oh, this one's heavy. 
I was able to find a big container. Oh yeah, this one's really heavy. Ooh, there we go. And so I think that this is filled with chip markers inside of it. So that's why it's so heavy. But I've got this metal case here and it's got all these cool lines on it. The lines are kind of bumpy in these places, but then it's really smooth when you run it, when you run your hands this way. It's also got these neat triangles over here that are made of rubber. Okay, so I said I would use my pencil crayon for this one and I will. So same thing as my pencil, I moved it over to the side, right? I'm using the side of my pencil. I'm not, I'm not using my pencil crayon like this, but actually what happens? There we go. So I'm still getting some texture when I use the top of it. And because this texture is so defined, because there's some really big gaps in between there, I was able to do it. But check it out. I made the assumption that I wasn't going to be able to get it by using the top of my pencil um, or pencil crayon. And I still was able to do it. But look at that. Using the same material on the same texture, I still get a, a, a different look to my tracing. And so I'm using a different technique and I'm able to uh, get something a little bit, a little bit different. So try everything, right? If you if you get or if you see somebody, if you're making with somebody and you see them trying something, um, you could ask their permission. But generally, when we're art making, we're all trying to inspire each other, right? So if somebody has a really cool idea and you see them trying it, try it out, see what happens. It's going to be different because you're probably using a different texture, but it's also your hands, and your hands are different from other people's hands. So it's always going to turn out a little different. Okay. I'm going to move oh, this really heavy container back. And what's great about you being able to explore is you're going to be able to go around your space and take your paper with you. You're not going to need to have to take the big and heavy object onto um, your making space. You're going to be able to just go around um, with your, your paper and be an explorer um, and trace things as you go. Okay, so we have all of these really cool visual textures now. And so what we were doing was something called rubbing, right? So we were rubbing our material on the paper and getting a texture. Oh, check it out. So because I've got, I've got some, some dirt and some paint and because the, I think there's some marks on the crayons as well, I didn't even need to get a new texture and I was able to get some of the marks and scores from my art board. And I wouldn't have known that until I tried that. Oh, I love it. I always love trying or uh, learning new things that I wasn't expecting. And so, yeah, so this is called uh, tracing textures or we are using a technique called rubbing. And so the, the, the cool thing about this is that when you're done doing your exploration, you, you find all these things around um, wherever you have gone exploring. And you could take this outside, right? If you're going on a field trip or you're going on a walk, maybe you go on walks every evening before you go to bed. Maybe it's the weekend and you're going to the park. You can take a piece of paper and you can fold it up in your, in your pocket. It doesn't have to be a perfect piece of paper, remember, right? Because we're just trying things. And you can put a pencil or a crayon in your pocket and then you can go see what you can trace outside because outside textures are going to be completely different from the ones you find inside. What does bark look like when you, try, when you do it? What about a bunch of rocks, the side of buildings, the ground? I have two more that I went, I went looking for earlier today. And this, this one is a crack in my concrete floor. So my studio, has this crack in the concrete. And so everywhere but the crack got some of, the, of my graphite stick, but the crack is white. And I really, I was really happy with how that one turned out. And then for this one right here, this was um, some, some asphalt, some of the, uh, the road outside of my studio. And so these were, this was the rocky pattern. And you can see it's really, really dark where the rocks were. 
but it had some really deep depressions or some holes all around the rock. So there's a lot of white space between each one of them. And so look at all the different textures I was able to get, and none of them are the same. And all of a sudden, we have all of these ready-mades. And if you've made with me in the past, you know that a ready-made is something that you make, um, or sorry, that you find that is already made, right? That's the word, already made. Um, and so we don't have to make it anymore because we've already made it. So what we're going to do with the uh, last part of our workshop is we're going to do something called a collage with textures. And so we're going to say that each one of these things are now uh, materials that we can make work with. And so what I'm talking about uh, when I say that is that we could use our scissors or we could rip up the paper and we're going to isolate. We're going to, um, we're going to make a pile of all these textures and they'll be just like crayons. They'll just be like things that we can use and we can bring into um, our art making. And so I'm going to turn off my voice for a second. I'm going to rip these off of the page. And maybe you're still going around um, and finding more textures. Maybe you're just watching today because you're not ready to make something. Maybe when we were trying things earlier with the eye touch, you're still playing a game of that. And that's okay. You don't have to be following along exactly with the workshop to still be participating. And some days we don't really feel like participating. Some days we do just want to watch. And um, at Explorers, that's totally okay. You can watch now and you could make things later. You could take some notes or you could just watch me making because it can be really relaxing and fun, inspiring to just watch somebody else make. Okay, I said I was gonna turn off my voice. So I am gonna turn off my voice while I rip up the last of this paper. Okay, so I'm gonna move all this paper to the side. And I also kept this page because you, I don't know if you saw, but when I ripped this paper, it made this cool white line here of where the paper ripped underneath. It didn't take all of the paper um, or it didn't rip a clean line. And so now I have this really neat texture of the paper that doesn't look as smooth. In fact, it feels, it feels soft it's kind of like a soft rough, a rough, a rough soft. <laughs> it's both of them together um, and it's different. And so I also really like the edge, right? Because the edge is rough. It's not sharp or clean or straight. It's kind of, it's kind of jagged. It's kind of um, uh, rough at the edge. And so I kept this one as well. And so the reason that I like to take them apart like this um, and take them off of their paper, and you can keep all of that paper for later, or just throw them in the recycling bin, is because now we, we have this, um, the ability to kind of really isolate, to really look, to really focus on each thing on its own, rather than um, saying that they're all part of the same thing. So they're all ready-mades. They're all 
they're like um, if this was a box of crayons but instead it's a box of textures um, I poured out my box of textures and now I've got each one of these here and they're and they're different and so what's cool is is that we can now do what we were doing before and so while we can't necessarily um, touch these textures because they're all paper and try it right touch some of the textures that you've done and see if they 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 feel um, feel like those other textures. So for this one, I can, I, with my muffin tin, I can feel this texture, but for all of these, they just feel like paper. So even though I've got the texture that's on the paper, um, they don't feel like the texture. And so this is the appearance. When I had said earlier that to describe a texture is a feeling or appearance, or so the look of a surface. So it's actually deceptive in this one. This one, we actually do need to use our eyes um, it's harder to use our hands to be able to describe any of these textures. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to use those skills that we had earlier where we weren't, uh, where we were touching things and we were coming up with words to describe the texture that we touched. Now what we can do is, is we can use those words to describe um, what we see. And so um, I had said that this one is kind of rough. I, I feel like it's rough. Maybe you have a different word to describe each of the ones that you see here. When you're looking at the different patterns that you found or the different textures that you found uh, wherever you went hunting or exploring, maybe you've got something a little bit different. Let's see if I can, my stickies really wanna flip up today. That's okay, I've got some new stickies, that's why. Okay, so for this one, this one, I, I guess I would say it feels kind of lumpy it feels maybe kind of sharp because the triangles come to a point in places. This one definitely feels sharp because the lines are so bold here, right? And then there's like these flecks as if there were these rocks that are here. Each of these are going to have different words that describe them. This one, this one again feels kind of lumpy or looks kind of lumpy. I wouldn't say that that feels soft, right? Or smooth. That's going to may maybe feel rubbery. Kind of actually looks rubbery to me. And that's because I've, I've, seen, um, I've seen this before. And so I'm making a connection from something that I saw before. And I'm making that assumption that I think that's going to look kind of rubbery. What we're going to do now is that now we have this crayon box of textures. We're going to pull them over to the side and we are going to make a collage. So we finished our rubbing, we described them, we looked at the describes, and so now we're going to collage with these textures. I'm going to grab another piece of paper. Oh, I've got to go around my artboard again. Grab another piece of paper. And you don't have to use a piece of paper. Um, I'm going to use the piece of paper because it creates a bit more of uh, contrast. Okay. Contrast while I'm making, which means that it's easier for you to see through my camera. But you don't have to use uh, a piece of paper. You could take uh, some painter's tape and you could make a frame. You could take one of your viewfinders and you could put the textures in your viewfinder. Or you could just use your imagination and the surface that you're working on, that's what you can uh, build your collage with because I'm not even gonna use glue. We're just going to place these different collages and see what we can make, or sorry, these different textures and see what we can make just by using um, our textures. Okay, so again, I'm gonna turn off my voice and I'm gonna see what I can make using my textures. What can you make? What did you find? And if you're still just hunting, that's okay. You can come back and you can check out uh, what I made when you, uh, when you get back in front of the screen. Okay, let's see what I can make. I'm gonna give myself a minute or two. Let's go.
Remember, if you have a pair of scissors, you could just use your scissors if you want, but I always really like how the textures uh, turn out a little bit different when I'm using um, when I'm using my fingers, when I'm using uh, rip paper. I think, I think that it ends up looking more interesting, but if you prefer to use scissors, that's totally okay. There is no right or wrong way to explore with these textures. Well, again, I got that cool spot by ripping. And if you wanted to, if you had some glue, you could glue it down as you go. I like to not use glue as I go because then that means I can move it around. Um, but if you really like how something is turning out and you want to glue it down so that you can um, layer things, or maybe you're in a windy area you're making outside, just remember that everything that we're making or trying today is not for keeps. So don't make a perfect picture. And if something's not turning out the way that you would hope, that's okay too because we're just trying it. We're not making anything for keeps. Um, so don't worry if it's not turning out perfectly. See, it's moving around, but that's okay. Because every time it moves, I, I'm gonna learn something a little bit different. And sometimes it's good to practice being a little bit frustrated, right? If things always turn out the way that we want them to. We don't get to learn how to fix problems. Uh, for when they don't turn out. So yeah, being able to uh, explore and come up with ideas on the fly or just whatever happens uh, is an important skill to learn, um, not just for art making, but for, for anything. Okay, is that part? That's okay. And if I glued that down, I wouldn't be able to, to do this. Oh, that's right. I'm going to replace those. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, I like this one. Mm. And you know, that's also something else. If you do decide you're going to glue it down, that's a different kind of challenge, right? What happens if you do want to put something um, underneath something that you glued? How do you get it off the page afterwards? How do you, um, how do you layer it? Do you have to find something else to layer on top of, right? You won't know until you try. And so just because I've said, you know, I'm not using glue today, doesn't mean that another time I couldn't use glue and then uh, maybe make a rule, right? Just, 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 just a fun rule, just something that I want to see what happens if I, but um, I glue it down and I can't, I can't pick it up. Once I make a decision, that's where it is. So what happens? What happens if I have to do that? Okay, yeah, there we go. I think I want more of those. Okay, just a few more, a few more textures. Are you starting to see a picture? I think I'm making a tree here. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that one really doesn't want to sit down. Here, I'm going to uncurl it here. Okay. And I think I, think I really want to use 
these funny kind of half smiles from the sandals. This can be a fun game as well, is that when you're all done making, is you can ask somebody if they didn't make with you to guess where, where you found the different textures, right? And sometimes people are not going to be able to guess. And that could be really, that can be, that can feel really, really good that you've, um, you've successfully found a texture that is so interesting um, that people can't even guess where it came from. <laughs> and don't forget to laugh, right? We're just, we're just making, we're playing, we're having a good time. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing that we're making is for keeps. And so it doesn't even have to turn out. Okay. Can you guess what I was trying to make? And I didn't have a picture before I started. This is just when I was looking at all of the textures, I just started to make and I wanted to see what would happen if I tried these different things. So I didn't have a picture in my head. I didn't, I didn't trace any of these things to begin with um, to come up with something. This is just what happened as I went along. Do you see what I was trying to make? I made a storm. Yeah, so my ground, this could be grass or maybe it's a sidewalk, right? And if I had ripped up this pattern I could have ripped it up, right? Remember, this is the one that's there, but I used it with the pencil crown. What if I had ripped it this way instead, right? Then the lines wouldn't have been up and down. So I feel like this could be grass because it's up and down. But if I had ripped it all this way, the lines would have been this way. Maybe that could have been a train track or, or just the ground. But I didn't do it that way. Now I've got all these cool ready-mades for the next time I want to make something. So that's my ground. And this is my tree here. And then I found that I really liked this texture here. It was kind of busy, like a whole bunch of leaves, like a whole bunch of uh, triangular leaves, right? Because I felt like maybe the triangles could look like leaves. But I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't tried it. And even though I used this texture for the bark there, I used it again for my clouds. And that was okay because I put them in different places. I really felt like this kind of dark cloud was different from those ones. And because I had a bit more white lines around the outside of it, I really liked how it kind of made a contour and that these were the clouds. And then my the crack that I really liked as if this was a dark and storming night. This is the lightning that comes out. And then all of my fun little uh, half circle shapes ended up being raindrops. And so when you're making collage, when you're, when you're using these uh, different textures to put a picture together, um, sometimes it can be really clear. When we're just practicing like that, it might not be really clear. And so if somebody asks you what, they, what you've made at the end, don't be upset. Tell them. Tell them a story. Read them your picture. We call that a narrative. And so sometimes people are going to come up to be able to, and see your picture. And if you've spent a lot of time and maybe you've glued it down and you've got your picture already, um, they're going to come up and they're going to be able to read a certain story. And they might tell you something that they see that is going to be different from what you intended. And that's okay because everybody's going to come to a picture and they're going to see something different. And now when we're pulling in textures, some people might see the texture even before they see the picture. And so that's a different kind of skill is trying to be able to make a picture that everybody understands all the time. And sometimes it's going to be easier and sometimes you're going to be more successful than others. Okay, so that was our week one. Remember week one of three exploring textures. So I'm going to be back next week where we're going to continue to explore textures together. Uh, this video is going to be available um, all throughout the week. So if you want to watch it again, if you want to watch it with a friend, if you want to try it again, watch the video again, but make something completely new. 
If you go hunting, if you go exploring for other uh, textures, follow along again, but make something new with the textures that you made. And if you have permission or you feel comfortable sharing what you made today, tell us about it. You can post it in our comments. You could join us for our watch party and post it in the comments there. You could send us a message. We would love to see what you're making um, at home. And don't forget, if you didn't make anything today and you just watched along, that's okay too. That's all part of exploring, coming up with new ideas together. So as always, I'm going to leave my video running for a little bit at the end while I clean up because we always want to prioritize. We always want to make time to, uh, to clean up and put everything away when we're all finished. Um, and so this is all going to go back into the recycling bin. Nothing is for keeps, right? And if you're not ready to finish, uh, to finish today, you can make something, make something new with the textures that you have. But I encourage you when you're all done to take all those things and to put them away in the, um, in the garbage bin or in the recycling bin so that you can try something new the next time you make along with a friend. There we go. I'm just gonna quickly make a second forest. <laughs> there we go. And then another, there you go. So if you're not ready to put it all away yet, you can make something new with the textures um, that you found today. But as I said, I'm gonna start cleaning up now. I can't wait to see you next week as we continue to explore textures together. Have a great and safe week and I'll see you soon.